Hello there, it's Claire Leroy here from The Little Design Corner and welcome back to my channel where I create videos for designers, decorators and home renovators who are looking to create beautiful homes to live in and businesses that they love to work in. And today I'm back with another SketchUp video and what we're doing today is looking at how to add custom wallpaper to your SketchUp models. So I have my online course SketchUp for Interior Design and one of the things that people love to be able to do inside SketchUp is to add custom elements. and Wallpaper for us interior designers and decorators is one of those things that people love to use, but they're never quite sure how to create those inside SketchUp, how to add those to their walls, how to make sure that they uh, look really nice and like they would in real life. So that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. If you are new around here, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I share videos about design, about running design business, about productivity, about SketchUp, about a whole bunch of different things. So if that sounds of interest to you, then we would love to have you part of the community. In the meantime, let's get stuck into today's video where we're looking at creating wallpaper inside SketchUp. Okay, so what I have done here is just mock up a quick uh, bedroom and it's got a couple of walls. And what we're going to do is actually put some wallpaper onto these walls here. Now, it sounds simpler than it is just to get it really looking good. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. So the most important thing is actually getting the right image to bring in for your wallpaper. So I've just brought a couple of examples up on um, Google here. And what you wanna try and do from your wallpaper supplier is get access to a tessellated seamless pattern of your wallpaper. So you most, places should be able to supply this, but some of them don't have the actual tessellated version, which basically means that the pattern's going to meet up so that like you see in this image here, uh, how can I stop it moving? But you can basically see that the when the wallpaper's put up, it doesn't have any seams and the pattern continues without breaking up. So that's what you wanna look for in terms of finding the original image to save to your, wherever you save your textures and then to import those into your SketchUp file. So that's the first thing. And what I've done is actually bring in this particular image here, which actually isn't tessellated. So you'll see what happens when you bring in an image that's not quite right versus this one, which I found, which is a seamless texture that you'd purchase and then you could have access to it. It's got a little um, watermark on it, but we're just going to use that as an example just to show you the difference between the two. So let's have a look at that. So basically the first step, once you've found an image that's going to work off your wallpaper, is that you just um, save the image. So just right click and save image as. It will download to wherever you save images. So just save it. I have a particular SketchUp folder in my Dropbox, which I save all of my SketchUp textures to. So I can just download and bring in any textures that I want to um, into SketchUp when I do that. So that's the next, that's the first step is to save whichever image um, you've been able to find. Now, a lot of people ask me, can I take a photograph of the wallpaper? If you're absolutely desperate, you can, but I guarantee it's not gonna work out very well. I have tried to do that with certain tiles and stuff in the past, and they just look pretty terrible once you add them to the SketchUp model. So that's definitely not recommended. The ideal thing is to obviously contact the wallpaper supplier and see if you can get that seamless or tessellated image of the wallpaper that you wanna use. So that's the first step. Okay, so now that we've got it saved to our um, to our wherever, our SketchUp textures folder or wherever you have it saved. The next thing is to actually bring it into your, um, your textures area in your SketchUp file. And as you can see, I've got the two uh, images that we just saved to my area brought in already. So the way that you do that is you come down here and you go new texture, and then it will bring up wherever you find your textures. So I have them in my folder here, uh, hang on, interior yeah, in there, and then SketchUp textures. And as you can see, I've got hundreds of textures all saved from over the years of working in SketchUp, and I would have saved them into there, and I can just bring them into, um, into my designated folder inside my color palette here. So that's the next thing. Now, then it's as simple as actually just painting the wall with that texture. So what you wanna do is get your paint bucket tool up here. And let's choose this one that isn't a great 
um, image to start with and I can just show you. So when you bring in an image that doesn't have that tessellation, doesn't have that seamless texture, you'll see that you can actually see the join lines here of where the image has come in. So this would be one of the images here. Hang on, let's just have a think about how that, yeah, so it comes in as that. So this is one and then this is another one. So basically it's repeating that image for you across the wall, but you can see these join lines. So that's what we wanna try and avoid. If you absolutely can't get the seamless, then obviously putting this up would still give you or the client an idea of what that wallpaper is gonna look like in the room. It's just that it doesn't look seamless. So let me show you with this one that is seamless, the difference, and I'll pop that on this wall over here. So again, grab your paint bucket and let's paint that one. And as you can see here, with this particular image that is seamless, we have none of these join lines. So we can't see the join lines in between where the image has repeated. So the image is repeating in this just in the same way as it is here. It's just that because it is that seamless texture, that tessellated pattern, it's not repeating and we can't see the repeat. So that's the difference between getting hold of a really good image that is seamless of your wallpaper. But as I said, if this is all you can get hold of with the particular wallpaper that you wanna use, obviously you can still tell what it's going to look like on the wall. So it's definitely still um, worth using and bringing in, but if you can get hold of that seamless one, it's gonna be a whole lot better. Okay, and then the next thing and the final thing I guess with it is that if you do want to change the size, so this might not be the actual scale of the wallpaper itself, so what you would do then is to actually just right click and you can come down to texture and you can go position texture and that will bring up your options here for how to reposition it and you can um, you know shift that around on the wall as you would like um, and then use this green one here um, to just zoom in and out. So say it was a much smaller print, you can zoom out. And as you do that, you can see there's those blue, I hope that's coming through, but you can see those like blue dotted lines. That is actually your one image. So the image that we have brought in and you can see the repeat of that image across the different, um, the different oh, off across that wall. So that's, as you can see, it's getting larger and larger as we zoom in, or if you want the pattern to be smaller, zoom out. And then so same on this wall, if we wanted to zoom that in and out, just use this green one here. And this also rotates it too. So this is a bit of a fiddly button to get used to. It can, because it tilts onto angles as well. You wanna try and keep that obviously straight on the axis because you want it to be straight on your wall, obviously. But again, you can zoom in and out and you can see those dotted blue lines that are highlighting the actual original image that we brought in. So that is basically applying custom wallpaper to walls inside SketchUp. And uh, as I said, the main thing and the most important thing is actually to set yourself up right. It's very simple, obviously, once you've got the correct image to bring it in and to adjust it inside SketchUp. So the most important thing is that setup. So do try and get hold of that seamless uh, pattern, that seamless image if you can and you'll have a much better result than if you get these ones where you've got the repeating pattern and it's obvious with the repeating pattern. So I hope that helps and gives you some tips for how to do that yourself. You can do this with any sort of wall texture. So you could do it with um, an image of, you know, different kinds of wall renderings or wall finishes. So it's not only wallpaper that this works with, this exact process is the same for any kind of uh, wall finish that you might want to apply to your walls inside SketchUp, any paint or anything like that. So it's all to do with the setup of this original image in terms of how it's going to look on your walls in your model eventually. So that is it. I have lots of other videos on my YouTube channel about SketchUp. So if you do want some other tips for interior design, then please do have a look at those. And remember that I do have my course, my online course, completely self-paced course, for SketchUp for interior design. So it's a beginner's course. It will take you from not knowing anything about how to use SketchUp all the way through to creating full models with all of your cabinetry and everything all um, designed out in there. So if that's of interest, I have linked to that below. So please check that out. Otherwise, please consider subscribing to the channel if these videos are helpful for you. And if not, then I will catch you in the next video and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.